So when you're invited to a TEDx presentation, the first thing that you feel is you feel, you feel honored. But when they tell you you're going to be the first presentation up, then the excitement disappears. <laughs> Today, um, when, I, when I looked at uh, many of my fellow speakers, and I, I met a few, I had the pleasure of meeting a few just uh, as we were warming up, uh, I realized that uh, quite a few of my fellow presenters uh, work for NASA, are associated with NASA, or with the European Space Agency. So I decided to put this up as my first slide. This is Apollo 17, the spacecraft used for the last manned mission to the moon. I had to put it up because that was the only piece of technology within my presentation in a technology evolution event. The second reason is because I personally feel that this is the start of the digitalization era. They are among the numerous innovations within that mission, there are two that stand out and have somehow found the way back to our lives today. The first one is the in-memory computer. That spacecraft had a, a 24 kilobyte computer that navigated the vehicle from Earth to the moon. To put things into perspective, 24 kilobytes is what it takes for a birthday singing card to play a singing song today. The second piece of innovation was the world's first handheld device. That was a calculator called HP35. It was made by Hewlett Packard, and the 35 stood for the 35 buttons it had on it. The name wasn't innovative, but the innovation is now something that all of us carry into our pockets today, a handheld device. 20 years from then, in June 1991, my father woke me up abruptly one morning to take me to work. That was my first day at work, right after school. He had laid out everything. Samples, price list, order book, my new briefcase, two bus tickets. He explained to me that I would never take money from him again. I had to earn my living. And he gave me the only piece of technology that was available at the time for a new sales guy. That was a handheld calculator by Casio. So 20 years between the last manned mission to the moon and my first day at work, technology had barely evolved. Now, fast forward two decades from that in today's world. Just think of the technology that a young person that comes to work for my business has with him. They have an iPad, they have an iPhone, a smartwatch. They're connected to social media. They can procure from business networks. They can make video calls, which was unprecedented at the time of the man, the last man mission, or at the time that my first day at work was. So try to put all of this into perspective and think of all the things that have happened in our life. In the last two decades, I have traveled the world extensively. I'm honored to lead across three continents, one of the most innovative technology firms. And I see technology evolution uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, how it affects us, how it affects our customers, the societies we live in. That one thing that, is, that stands out, and for which I'm here to talk to you today, is how our DNA evolves. Our lives evolve, our brain changes, and our DNA is evolving, and we have to take notice of it. So alongside this innovation, we also have the evolution of the senses. Think about a smartphone. We touch it. And then think about a wearable device that's attached to a T-shirt that fills over all of our vital statistics. And then feel of the technology that is on a, on a smartwatch that gives us notifications and vibrations so that we understand that something interesting is happening. A friend of us is nearby. We've exceeded the heart rates when running. 
or we've just completed a purchase in iTunes. Then think about sound. Most of the people in this room use Sazam. And a few years from now, the devices we carry on us will be listening to the environment and will be able to recognize, based on our preferences and behaviors, the things that are of interest to us. We will be able to procure, through a television set at home, something that is of interest to us, simply because an advertisement played and our smartphone listened to it. Think about Google Glasses and how pioneering this was. Think about the life of an architect or an engineer. Think about digital or analogical reality. How I can put together my plans and reality, and wearing smart glasses, I can see exactly my deviations from the plan. And then taking it a step further, think about blind people. Think how their life can change when they have a drone flying over them with facial recognition, understanding who they are, and giving them um, uh, directions as to how they can walk via infrared or high-definition cameras. Think the impact we make into these people's life simply by having a drone which costs 100 euros following them. Then think about three-dimensional printing. We can print food. You can print a dessert. You can print any dish you want, pasta. You can print meat. And imagine the, the behavioral differences we're going to have in a day-to-day -day dietary. No different to what has happened in manufacturing. Manufacturing has had an unprecedented change. We moved from mass-producing goods to custom-printed goods. Think about smell. Devices that sense gas have been around for more than three decades. Initially in mines, now in workplaces, most recently in every home. Now think about a plug-in in your iPhone that can emit senses so that you have an unprecedented experience alongside your video call. You can smell the flower the other person is holding on the other side of the line. Our brain receives an amazing number of data which comes from our senses, predominantly from our senses. Our brain has a fantastic ability to evolve. This is called elasticity. This is something that we need to use, however. We have two choices to stay idle, for instance, just enjoy the friendships we have at Facebook, or to be dynamic and proactive. In other words, take advantage of the Facebook technology, of the social media, the business networks, and the technology that is out there. Now, the impact that comes to our lives goes, of course, way beyond the senses. It changes our life. Think about smart cities of tomorrow. We've been involved in a couple of uh, very interesting projects, landmark projects, because they were the first. One was in Rio de Janeiro in, in Brazil, whereby there were millions of sensors and cameras and points that could receive data that were all fed in a single in-memory computer, similar technology to the Apollo 17 and that analyze all the events, whether it's data, power outage, traffic, material changes in the social environment we live in through what people tweet or, or write on Facebook or LinkedIn. And all of this can be analyzed in a single computer so that the city can prevent things, can manage the aftermath of accidents or big events. Another life-changing um, event, uh, project, has happened in Istanbul, in Turkey. There, using again in-memory technology, 
but also pieces of handheld devices, we've managed to put together a system that compares images from satellites so that we know exactly what has happened before and after a major earthquake. This way, the security services know exactly where they have to attend and, and focus on the areas where the images have changed before and after the earthquake. But despite all of these evolutions, and the ones that my fellow presenters will explain to you momentarily, you look at the unemployment rate in Europe, and the unemployment between the young remains at 50% in most European countries. And then you hear that the, the IT sector in Europe has 100,000 vacancies. And this is the biggest oxymoron we have in this society. There's a major disconnect between the opportunities that lie ahead with the technology, the changes that this evolution has, bring, has brought to our life, and particularly to our DNA, and the reality, our ability to capitalize on those opportunities. And now we hear a lot of people talk about the lost generation. I am here today to help the young understand that the evolution does not go together with the lost generation. There is no such thing as lost generation. Think about 1972, the handheld device. Two decades later, my first day at work. Two decades later, this is today, all the technology we have in our hands and the difference in the opportunity that a person on their first day at work has versus the opportunity that I had on my first day at work. Think how I evolved and then think how you can take advantage of what is out there and make your life different, make your life better. There's no such thing as lost generation, because this generation is full of opportunity. There's a lot of innovation and a lot of technology that opens up new horizons. For the first time, this country has entrepreneurs after many, many years. For the first time, this country has technology startups, which is something that couldn't have been possible a few years ago. Now imagine, imagine what you can do. You've made the first day today, ladies and gentlemen. You have come here. You've come here to hear about evolution. Grasp the opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity out there and convert them into a brighter future for you. Thank you very much.